Hi, so recently with the release of the DJI Mic 3 and various other small portable microphone systems, the advantage of 32-bit float recording comes up quite a lot. Now 32-bit float recording gives you theoretically an unlimited dynamic range for your recordings and the advantage of that is that you do not have to worry too much about setting the recording level. Now on the other side there are also many that say that 24-bit has all the dynamic range we need and we cannot even use more dynamic range because there's also the dynamic range of the microphone, the preamp, etc. So let's do a short practical test and dive into the magic of 32-bit float recording. Let's go! Now, if you're watching this channel, I assume that you're all familiar with the wonderful world of digital audio recording, but let's just do a very quick recap before we dive into the world of 32-bit float recording. Now, in the analog world, an audio signal is just a continuous flow, a waveform as displayed in red over here. It continually changes level, goes up down, sometimes faster, sometimes slower. And if that signal is amplified properly and fed to a speaker, you hear sound, music, speech, whatever you record it. Now in digital audio recording, we store that signal in numbers by taking samples of the signal. You can see that over here as well. Those are the blue dots basically. So every once in a while we take a sample of that red line with our AD converter, analog to digital converter, and this basically turns the sound into a set of numbers representing the level at each sample interval. And when we play back those samples through our D to A converter, digital to analog converter, the idea is that we restore the red line because we've taken enough samples quick enough and with enough resolution to reliably be able to restore that red line. Now there are two properties very important in that process. One is the sample rate. How often do we take samples of that red line? And that's where we're talking about sample rates like 44.1 kilohertz, 48 kilohertz, 96 kilohertz and up. So with 48 kilohertz, we are actually taking 48,000 samples per second to record that red analog line of audio. Now another property which is important is the bit depth. And over here, this signal, you can see that it has been sampled with four bit bit depth, which gives us 16 discrete levels that we can sample. And you see that all those blue dots, the samples are exactly on one of those levels that are possible with a four bit sample. Now four bit is not really a lot, as you can see, it might be pretty hard to actually reliably restore that red line just from those blue dots, but that's why we usually use more bits than four to sample audio. This is a table of how many levels you have depending on the number of bits you have in each sample. So four bits, you have 16 levels, and that gives you a dynamic range of 25 dB. When you use 16 bits in your samples, you have over 65,000 levels that you can store in your sample, and that gives you a dynamic range of about 98 dB. And this information is coming from Wikipedia, by the way so you can check it out now nowadays we usually record in 24 bits right and that gives you over 16 million levels that you can use for your samples providing a dynamic range of 146 db and that's basically more than the dynamic range of human hearing so everything you can hear you should be able to sample with 24 bits of audio now you can go higher of course next up is 32 bits which gives you over 4 billion levels that you can use for your sample with a theoretical dynamic range of 194 dB, which is huge already, right? Totally theoretical because your microphone and your preamp will not have a dynamic range of 194 dB. So using this number of bits is questionable. And now we're even talking about 32-bit floating point recording, which is not in this table, but the idea of floating point recording is that you still have 32 bits, but a certain part of those 32 bits is to decide on where you put the digital point, the comma, in your number. So you have a huge number of bits already to represent values, and then you can even move the comma to the left and the right, a lot of positions, allowing you to use even more different levels in your samples. And in theory, 32-bit float recording provides 1500 decibels of dynamic range. So why would you ever need that and how does it actually work? Because there definitely is no AD converter with a dynamic range of 1500 decibels. Well, usually in 32-bit float recording, what they do is that you have a couple of different AD converters in your device, where one samples the lower level part of the signal, and the next one samples the range above that, and maybe even a third one the range above that. And that gives you a much bigger dynamic range. And the advantage of that is that you do not have to be so careful with setting your recording levels, because together those AD converters can sample a big dynamic range, and that dynamic range can be stored in those 32-bit float samples without a problem. But how does that work in practice? Well, over here I have a DJI Mic 1 
which has 24-bit 48 kilohertz recording, so not 32-bit float. And over here I have the DJI Mic 2, which has 32-bit float recording and it is set and configured to 32-bit float. So what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to record my voice speaking really, really loudly into these microphones, then at a normal level and then at a very soft level as well. And then we're going to get the audio from these devices and see the difference. Now at the same time, I'm also going to record my voice through this SM7B, through my Pacifica preamp and going right into the RME ADI 2 Pro analog to digital converter, which is arguably one of the finest mastering grade converters. So we're also going to have a look at audio going through this very nice signal chain. Now don't worry, I'm going to significantly lower this microphone when I scream. I don't want to do that to you, okay? This is me talking really softly into these microphones. This is me talking at a normal level into these microphones. This is me really screaming into these microphones. Now before we check out the audio of this, if you like this video or find it useful at all, please give it a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm so that it gets shown to more people. Subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon so you know when I publish another video. For even more support you can use the super thanks button below the video, which is kind of a virtual tip jar, or maybe if you intend to buy anything at one of these online stores, I have affiliate links in the description below and if you click one of those links before you buy anything, I will get a small commission without any additional cost to you which is always greatly appreciated. And you can also find links to my recording chain here and to those DJI mic recorders as well as the latest DJI Mic 3. But let's import the audio into Cubase and have a look. So first of all, if we look at the two files that I downloaded from those DJI transmitters, this is from the DJI one. If you look at the audio properties, you can see that it's a 24-bit 48 kilohertz file. If you look at the file that I downloaded from the DJI two, you can see that it's a 32-bit floating point recording at 48 kilohertz as well. Now import it into Cubase, it looks like this. So the first part is the whisper part, which you can actually hardly see in the waveform. But if I increase the display resolution a bit, you can see that there is definitely signal there. Then the second part is where I was speaking at a normal level. And over here, you can see that I was screaming. And over here, these peaks here, you can see that the DJI Mic 1 is definitely clipping here. Now, if you look at the audio statistics in Cubase here, then both the minimum and the maximum sample value is zero and the peak amplitude is also zero. So that means that the real amplitude of the signal was probably above zero. So this signal is definitely clipping. If you look at the SM7B, you can see that the peak amplitude is still below zero over here, meaning that it was not clipping. And that's probably because I really had a lot of headroom in the gain settings for this microphone so that I basically never run into clipping audio. So that's a matter of proper gain staging. And if we then look at the DJI Mic 2 with 32-bit float recording, you can see that the peak amplitude is actually measuring above 0 dB. So you think 0 dB is clipping level, but not when you're recording a 32-bit float. Now you can also more clearly see that this is peaking if I zoom in a little bit on the loud part over here. And you might think, well, is this really clipping? Well, let's turn down the volume a bit. Then you can see, yeah, this is really clipping. Now you might think, is this 32-bit recording over here also not clipping? But if we turn down the volume on that one, you can see that it's definitely not clipping. It was just beyond the display range. You couldn't see it, but it's still not clipping. Thanks to 32-bit float recording. So that worked as intended. So let me now set about the same level for these signals and then have a listen. How does this actually sound? I'm really roughing it a little bit. So this is the SM7B recording. This is me really screaming into these microphones. Still not great sounding. Probably the microphone or the preamp is distorting a bit. Let's check out the DJI Mic 1. This is me really screaming into these microphones. Not pretty, right? DJI Mic 2. This is me really screaming into these microphones. Also not exactly pretty. Maybe the microphone was distorting a bit or the preamp in there, but at least the signal is definitely not clipping. So we saved that part of it. Now, another interesting part is of course, where I spoke very softly. Can we actually save that and restore that? Let's cut that so that we can adjust the audio volume to a level that we can actually hear. And even when boosting 24 dB, I'm not getting anywhere close to the loudness of this part over here. Let's boost this to about the same level here. I have to boost this way less. And for the DJI Mic 2, okay, let's have a listen. First, the SM7B. This is me talking really softly into these microphones. So the sound is quite clear, but maybe you could hear that there was quite a bit of noise in there at the end. Let's have a listen to the noise over here. 
Yeah, it's my breath with some noise. Let's have a listen to the DJI Mic 1. This is me talking really softly into these microphones. Very, very similar amount of noise. Now the 32-bit float recording. This is me talking really softly into these microphones. Now I'm still hearing a bit of noise, but it's definitely less as the other two. Let's compare just the noise part here. Yeah, so apart from being able to avoid clipping in 32-bit floats, it also has some advantages with audio that was recorded quite low. You can boost it quite a lot without getting the same amount of noise as recordings with the 24-bit AD converters. So that was my short test of 32-bit float recording. Not terribly scientific, of course, but a nice practical use case of how this actually behaves compared to your normal traditional recording. I think it definitely has its uses in scenarios where you may run the risk of not correctly setting the level of your audio recordings. For example, in interview situations, kind of what these DJI mics are really good at, of course. That's why you have two, one for you, one for the person you're interviewing. And I think it's kind of nice and reassuring to know that even if you did not set the levels exactly correct, you can still correct those levels later either by turning down the levels of audio that was really loud or boosting the levels of audio that was maybe a bit too soft. At the same time, it's not a magic bullet, of course, because you still have the dynamic range and the noise of the rest of your signal chain to worry about. But I can definitely see this providing one less worry when you're running gunning some audio, when you're recording audio with a video, an interview or whatever. Now let me know what your experiences are with 32-bit audio recording. Do you have one of these smaller transmitters or receivers maybe? Or some other system that you're using for 32-bit float audio recording? I'm really interested to find out whether you're actually using it, when you're using it, and whether you like it. Let us know in the comments. Now when you're recording music, one of the most important things aside from the person who's playing the music, of course, is which microphone you're using. So I really did an extensive test of microphones that I have on my acoustic guitar to see which one was performing best for my acoustic guitar. I'll link that video over here. Check it out, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.